And when we say that we're a Christian nation, because we hear that, especially like in the white evangelical, well, we're a Christian nation, we're a Christian nation. No, we're not. We were not founded on Christian principles. Why were a people oppressed for 400 plus years? Why was the first slave ship named Jesus? Why, you know, why don't we talk about that? What is American Christianity? And we're talking about the biblical Jesus, the Jesus of the scriptures versus the American Jesus that we've seen as of late. Our first guest is gonna be Kendall Aaron. She is an artist, a poet, a sister in Christ, and she'll be joining me for the theater section. Now I wanna warn you, don't ever follow a man that claims Christ yet his heart is full of pride because the Bible says if you love God and hate your neighbor, you are a liar. It's because of this legacy of sin that we say we're a nation under God, but that's just a facade. It sounds morally correct, but if you strip it down, it's void of any biblical context. Let me be clear. America is not a Christian nation. It's a nation with many Christians, but I refuse to let anybody blaspheme my God for their patriarchal religion. If we want to see change, there's only one solution and that starts with repentance. Because without repentance, there is no remission. We have to rid ourselves of the idol of self and power. We have to turn to the one that will come at any hour. Can you tell our audience a little bit about that line specifically? What yeah. do you mean when you say, I don't want anyone or I won't allow anyone to blaspheme my God with their patriotic religion? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so it was uh, actually that was written after George Floyd's um, murder and that line specifically um, it just came out of seeing this idea I find it every time that we um, come back to the conversation because it's always a conversation of uh, racial racial tension one of the things that pops up is the white man's religion um or this this idea that christianity yeah that christianity stemmed from um the white man which is delved into like this this white centric world and that is what like unfortunately like that's what christianity is linked to mm -hmm. and it just the it makes me upset because like it's, it's far from the truth um and and so that line is really is it was to expose and to help people see, see that there is a true difference between what it means to follow christ and what it means to have a commitment to a country that is fleeting to a world that is fleeting um and so i really just wanted to to expose that idea that this world is fleeting, that the country will one day be no more, but that mm. God's kingdom is everlasting. My next guest is gonna join me on a section called Transparency. We're gonna talk about the unlearning that we've had to do from religious systems compared to the scriptures and to what Jesus has uh, taught us in our personal walks with him. I, I was always one step from being Muslim. I was always one step from being a five percenter. I was one step from not being Buddhist, but so many other things because these things made sense to me. And Christianity never made sense. As a matter of fact, I remember being scared of a white Jesus. Now, not to get into the, the, the topic of what color was Jesus. I mean, on one in one circumstance, it doesn't matter. On the other circumstance, it does matter because you want to tell history correctly. My path to Christ took me 36 years. And I met uh, my my partner in rhyme, uh, Brian Austin, Mr. Flav, Flav Styles. He he invited me to church. I was probably like maybe 10 years in the military. He invited me to church. I went to the church and through all this time, I had no interest in God whatsoever. And mm. I finally was convicted. Looking at my, my spiritual timeline, that once upon a time, I called out to God because I did not know his name. What wow. is your name? Who are you? I want to follow someone. Why do you think I'm researching all these blind alley reliefs? Uh, excuse me, these uh, blind alley beliefs and these doctrines. Why do you think I'm looking for all this? And he had a purpose for it. You know, the scripture in Romans 8, 28, where it talks about all things work together. It worked together when I finally got saved. And mm -hmm. it was an explosion beyond mental capacity because 
being 36 and finding salvation, God finding me because I was lost, not him. Uh, there, there's only one way to God, mm. but there's plenty of ways to Jesus. Mm. People found Jesus at the bottom of a bottle, at the bottom of prescription bottles. They found Jesus at life-threatening moments after getting hit by a car. And I take that all and put that uh, as a part of my testimony. I, I didn't leave the best for last, but this is about to go up a notch. We have Megan Poff, who is, um, as a personal note, she is a good friend of mine, but she was also my vocal coach for quite some time. To, ha to be saved does not mean that you ate apple pie and you know Jesus because you went to Sunday school. That's not having a relationship. With the She's Lord. coming in hot, folks. She's coming in hot. Well, so, you know, I and I think, you know, with all that has happened, see, I grew up in church, but I did not understand the the full entirety of the system. Mm. And when we say that we're a Christian nation, because we hear that, especially like in the white evangelical, well, we're a Christian nation, we're a Christian nation. No, we're not. We were not founded on Christian principles. Why were a people oppressed for 400 plus years? Why was the first slave ship named Jesus? Why, you know, why don't we talk about that? You know, our, our founding fathers, I'll say John Adams, because I actually believe he did know the Lord. Um, you know, I don't know. I'm not one to like, you know, do a pulse on that, but right. he, they all owned slaves. They reported that, and you know, people can say, "Oh, well, th those were that well, those were different times, and those are different times." Then, well, do we say that about the people who were sacrificing babies to the god Moloch? Well, those were different times then. Do we excuse that sin? Mm. Mm. You know, so it's like you have to call it out, and we can't have reconciliation within the church between brothers and sisters, we say we worship the same God, mm -hmm. we're not willing to experience each other's pain. But for Americans specifically, for Americans who follow Jesus, who say they are disciples of Christ, followers of the way, um, how do you say we should gird ourselves up away from all of this delusion and deception about this country? You know, it's interesting um, because I I think that we tell ourselves um, if I follow A B C D E F G like if I check all the boxes then I'm gonna be doing you know really well like God's gonna be like there you go and I really think God is is searching our hearts and you know even King David said search my heart oh God. You know, let let me know. So I think what the church needs to do is that they need to follow the principle of God. I need you to show me. It's going to hurt. It might be uncomfortable, but I need you to show me if there's anything that I'm clinging to in this moment. What, I have two boys, and when I, my youngest, he, he would have his diaper changed, right? And he, anytime I had to change his poopy diaper. He would cry. He would scream. He hated it because he liked the comfort of the warm poop. I know that sounds really grotesque and gross, but he didn't like me undoing his diaper and cleaning him with a cold, wet wipe in the middle of, you know, a public restroom or wherever. You know, he wanted to sit in his warm poop. And I thought about that and I was like, sometimes I think that our sin is like warm poop. Mm. You, know, our, you know, the things that we hold on to, it makes us comfortable, but we don't realize how smelly we are and how unattractive that is to other people, right? So is, I don't even, I don't even know if I really need to say anything. Uh, that was Truth Be Told live and it was live, okay? It was live. We're getting a little applause from the back area. It was a live stream that you're gonna wanna go back and watch, okay? I, I, I think my brain, my brain can't take no more, y'all. I'm just, I'm so overwhelmed with how amazing 
the turnout has been and how incredible you guys have been in the comments. I see every single one of you and I'm thankful to you. And this is a great, um, it just humbles me to be here, to be able to speak truth to power. And the power is you guys. And the truth is here on the Truth Be Told live stream. And I love you dearly. I just wanna say, if you could, before we go, make sure you drop your aha moment, your revelation down in the comments below. If you're watching this later on the live stream, thank you so much. Make sure you hit that like button and drop your your aha moment down in the comments below because uh, my three guests were so incredible. That's all folks. That's all I got for you guys. And I love you. And I will see you in the next one. Bye now.